The fourth thing we need to be aware of for having a successful butterfly habitat is we do not want to use pesticides. Now, pesticides are generally uh, chemicals or solutions that are made to get rid of certain kind of pests. But many times those include insecticides, which are specifically created to get rid of insects. The fourth thing we need to be mindful of when creating a butterfly garden is not using pesticides. A pesticide is a broad term that is used to speak of something that gets rid of some kind of pest. It can be rats or slugs or insects, but especially insecticides. Those are very harmful for butterflies because butterflies are insects. That means when people are spraying for mosquitoes, they are killing butterflies. I know that's a hard one because a lot of people don't like other insects. They prefer butterflies, but they don't really want roaches. And I can understand that. When I first had my butterfly garden, uh, you know, I live in South Florida and we have lots of roaches and palmetto bugs. They're all over in South Florida. Anybody who lives in the warm, hot tropics knows this. So it's very common to hire an insecticide company who comes and sprays for them. But Having the exterior of my house sprayed, I realized was not helpful because it could hurt my butterflies. So initially, years ago, what I did was I asked my insecticide company to switch to granules rather than a spray that just indiscriminately sprays anything and everything in my yard. I asked them to put granules down. Now, that was better, but it still wasn't for me best. So nowadays I have canceled that service and I do not have any sort of insecticide service in my yard because butterflies are important to me. Now that doesn't mean that I just allow roaches to run over my house, right? There are other friendly ways to get rid of insects. One of my favorite ones is called diatomaceous earth. Now that's an organic substance. There's no chemicals involved and it hurts insects or kills insects by scratching. It's, it's very, Diatomaceous earth on a microscopic level has very sharp edges that cut the outsides of insects like fleas or roaches. And so when those insects touch it, it essentially ends up killing them. So for instance, on my pets, I put diatomaceous earth, you can rub it in their uh, fur. And in fact, you can buy diatomaceous earth at a lot of pet stores. And these are some alternatives that you can use rather than spraying chemicals all over your entire garden. And the same thing goes for fleas. You can put diatomaceous earth all inside of your house. It's actually completely uh, harmless to humans. It's completely harmless to humans. And in fact, there are some food grade parts of it. There are some food grade kinds that you can actually eat, which means if you have children, you don't have to worry about putting diatomaceous earth around the inside of your house. If they accidentally ingest it, it's fine. Do your research first and make sure that you do have food grade diatomaceous earth. But that's one thing that I recommend as an alternative to using chemical insecticides if you're trying to cultivate a butterfly habitat. Now you might also be thinking, well, what about pests that get on my plants like aphids pictured here? And that's a really valid question because if we stop using chemicals, it is true that there will be insects that come into your yard. Different people have different opinions on this and it's kind of like a sliding scale, but what I personally do is absolutely nothing. I don't use insecticides in my yard anymore. And in fact, ladybugs are, are one of the number one predators of aphids. So as you see here, this ladybug has found my milkweed plant with aphids on it, and she is making a meal out of those aphids. Because see, this is how it works in nature. There will be a certain animal that might start proliferating in your garden, and then naturally its predators will be drawn to it and will start eating the aphids or whatever the pest is. This is cyclical and this is nature, and this is how it works. It's just as humans, we've got to this point where we've become completely intolerant of any sort of insect that we don't think is helpful. And as we mess with these systems, we are doing some harm to our ecosystems. 
This bug is called a milkweed bug, and it's not a beneficial bug for that plant. Uh, it's not harmful to humans, but it is a, it can be a disease vector for the plant. And I'm gonna give you the same answer as I did with the aphids. I actually don't do much to these milkweed bugs, even though they are in my butterfly garden. I generally remove them by hand or spray them with the garden hose, but I don't get too concerned about pests. I really just let nature take its course. I realize that might not be cool for you and that's totally fine, no judgment here. I'm just telling you that um, it's best to take a second look at how you're handling insects and consider the impact on the environment. I know a lot of people really love dragonflies and I agree, they're super cool insects. And you know what dragonflies love to eat? Mosquitoes. That's why you often see dragonflies in the evenings around water, uh, you know, lakes or canals. They eat mosquitoes and mosquitoes come out in the morning and the night, they're crepuscular insects, and that's when dragonflies come out and feed on them. Now, dragonflies will also eat butterflies. And so some people freak out, well, then I don't want dragonflies in my garden. And what I say, again, is let nature take its course. It is true that when you have dragonflies, they might eat your butterflies and ladybugs might eat your butterfly eggs. But this is nature and this is just how it's set up. I also want to mention that if we have insecticides in our yard and we're anywhere near a body of water or even just rain, we'll take those insecticide and put insecticides and put them into the groundwater, which means humans might start ingesting these chemicals. So I just stay away from it and let nature do its thing.